Hey, we are on our way to the Fountainhead Palace now, so today we'll be exploring Sunken Valley and Gun for It. As usual, we'll discuss environmental art, sculptors, idols, also character art, and gain a little bit of historical context, something that is crucial when talking about literally anything in Sekiro. As usual, we'll quickly go over the disclaimers, legend, and sources. If it's not your first time around, feel free to skip ahead. Number one, use common sense. Please do not assume that I have access to some secret true knowledge. I'm just entertained by reading Sekiro in Japanese. My lore theories are just theories, so treat them accordingly. Number two, I am not a professional translator. I have never worked in localization. Yes, I will say that something is translated poorly and something is not, and it will be my personal point of view. Ultimately, my goal is to give you the information so you can see if the localization was good or not, whether something important was lost or not. My opinion is just that, and I choose to share it. Number three, I am not an expert on Buddhism or Shintoism. I will leave links to the religious terms that we will encounter so you can read more on your own if you're interested. As usual, the transcriptions I give do not follow all academic rules and I don't think it's necessary. They are just here to represent the pronunciation in case you're curious. All sources I used for this research will be listed in the description box below along with all the additional information that I referenced throughout the video so you can read more if you're interested. There you will also find a link to my original blog post if you want to read it through. Before we descend into Sunken Valley, let's rewind a bit to the Inner Sanctum. Remember in the last video I said that there is an image of a deity behind the child, but it's so worn out and poorly lit that I cannot really tell who that is. After the video was released, one of the members of our community over on Discord managed to pull this flat texture in high resolution from the game files so we all can get a closer look. Thank you. So, what have we here? Seems to be a whole lot of nothing because the image is still really worn out and the background doesn't really have any meaningful details, only vague forms of maybe flowers and I'm sure I'm imagining most of it. It is a bodhisattva or a buddha even, but how do we know which one? Luckily, in the previous video, we've done a whole lot of research on Buddhism and specifically Sampo Temple, so we'll be able to unravel this whole thing in no time, just follow me. This is an image of a bodhisattva or a Buddha located in the inner sanctum, the heart of Sampo Temple. Must be an important deity then. One of the five wisdom kings? We have already seen Fudo and Kongo Yaksha, but those were kind of on the outskirts of the temple. Five wisdom kings are supposed to be avatars or incarnations of five cosmic buddhas. Five cosmic buddhas fit very well because they are heavily featured in Japanese esoteric buddhism and specifically in Shingon buddhism, and we have already seen them on mandalas in the initiation hall. Five cosmic buddhas are tightly connected to pure land buddhism, yet another branch of buddhism that is focused on achieving rebirth in pure land, a land of buddha. It is a celestial realm where most Buddhists aspire to be reborn in, and it is one of the most widely practiced Buddhist traditions in East Asia. Each of five cosmic Buddhas has a direction associated with him, and consequently a corresponding pure land. The most common pure land today, in Japanese Buddhism too, is that of Amida Buddha, also known as Land of Bliss, or Western Pure Land, because Amida governs West. Let's check the image of Amida against the worn-out image from behind the Child of Rejuvenation. Thanks to the image pulled from the game files, we can see him much more clearly now. Pay attention at how his hands are positioned, it is a very specific pose. Yep, that's him. Thus we can pretty confidently say that the deity depicted in the inner sanctum is Amida, one of five cosmic Buddhas and the primary Buddha of Pure Land Buddhism as it is practiced in Japan, who governs West and his Pure Land is called Gokuraku. Before you get super excited about the West theme, you know, the dragon being from the West and the child returning him there and the presence of Amida in his Western Pure Land, I also got excited there for a second, but I don't think the connection is all that strong considering that there couldn't really be another cosmic Buddha depicted there since Amida is the central figure of Japanese Pure Land Buddhism. We'll start our descent at Undershrine Valley. The name is really straightforward. The art book doesn't really feature this idol or anything around it, so we'll take this opportunity to talk about character art. We have already looked at the headless, and if you go back from this idol, you'll eventually reach a bunch of kubizuka, burial mounds with severed heads that are there to appease the Gokan headless in the cave further along the underwater passage. If you decide to take a treasure from a burial mound, the spirits will show up and attack you. Well, one of the treasures is a prayer bead, so I suppose we don't really have a choice, do we? 
Surprisingly, both regular gunmen and heavy gunmen are just called Ochidanishu, Sunken Valley people or Sunken Valley clan. The art book doesn't really differentiate between them. They are heavily bandaged and the bandages hide bleeding sores. They also cover their noses and mouths with cloth, as well as their hair. I suppose it's got something to do not only with the poisonous fumes emanating from the floor of the valley, but also with iron sand and iron production that can cause difficulty breathing and all sorts of lung problems. Later we'll see that the floor of the valley is 10 shades of red because of how rich in iron it is. The character models for both gunmen seem to be identical, only the heavy gunmen wear a voluminous cloak and the regular gunmen don't. They also have the cutest idle animation, they clean their guns when not alerted. The Sunken Valley Idol is called exactly that, Ochidani, Sunken Valley. Ochiru means to fall, to drop, to collapse, and generally descend, so I think Sunken Valley is a great localization and it sounds very cool. Near this idol we meet a Senpo Temple Shinobi with a dialogue that puzzles me to this day. The English version is generally correct, he says that the gun fort of the Sunken Valley was more formidable than the rumors had it, they were reckless to go unprepared, and now he's hearing the nostalgic bells of Senpo Temple as he draws his last breath. Well, I'm not sure why they even attempted to take or infiltrate Gunford. They obviously had more luck infiltrating Ashina Castle. What was it that they wanted so badly? Maybe divine abduction? Divine abduction was given to Senpo Temple Shinobi to spirit children away to Mount Congo for the experiments, and then the artifact wound up in the Gunford. Still, divine abduction doesn't seem to be a reason enough to warrant a straight-up assault. Gunford is also the most straightforward way to the White Serpent Nushi and Riven Cave, but I'm not sure why Senpo monks, or Shinobi for that matter, would want anything to do with those. The assault clearly was poorly thought out and thus likely spontaneous, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. If you have any theories as to why the Shinobi wanted so badly into the gun fort he got himself shot by Shirafuji, please let me know. The view of the gun fort from this idol is called Gunfort Vista. The big rock on the side is called Gunfort Rocky Mountain. Underbridge Valley in Ashen Outskirts is also technically a part of the Sunken Valley. I have a few close-up screenshots of the Shirohebi no Koshi, White Snake's palanquin. It is very, very old, and the metal fixtures bear the motif of sakura flowers with five petals. Shirafuji and Shirahagi are called snake eyes. The original word for it is janome, literally snake eyes. But it is also a set expression that means bullseye pattern that is usually on a target. Conveniently, Snake Eyes part of their name not only ties into the whole Big Snakes Mining Iron Sand plus that we discussed in the last video, and White Serpent Nushi that people from the Sunken Valley worship, but also lets you know that both ladies are incredible markswomen. Serafuji is written in katakana, but it is a Japanese word, and the kanji for it would be this kanji, which is white plus wisteria. A curious choice of flower considering that wisteria seeds are poisonous. Shirahagi is also named after a flower, which is very cute and makes dying to both of them a more elevated experience. Shirafuji is an Okami descendant, and as such she is very vulnerable to Sabimaru's poison, contrary to her colleague Shirahagi, who is completely immune. We'll talk more about her in the Ashen Adepts video. I have to say, entering Gunford is probably my favorite sequence in the game. I just run across the chasm, grapple 100 times up the cliff, run past every gunman, triggering all the firecrackers on the ground, barge into the fort itself, run past heavy gunmen, and touch idol. It's great every time. Its Japanese name sounds incredibly cool. It's Teppo Toride, Iron Gun or Cannon Fortress or Iron Gun Fort. As for the firecrackers and firearms in general, there is a little history backdrop maybe involving Armored Warrior and Little Robert. As we already discussed in a corresponding video, Robert's firecrackers were a product of Nanban trade, a period that started in 1543 with Portuguese merchants establishing trade routes to Japan. They introduced matchlock firearms, Christianity, and some of their customs. The firecracker's description says that Robert and his father sold them to sustain themselves during their travels, and I wonder if that's how the firecrackers ended up in Gunford, adding to its impenetrability. As for the firearms, the Sunken Valley people appear to use iron cannons, the po, that were introduced to Japan in the 13th century, so that's very historically accurate. The Portuguese merchants during Nanban trade brought matchlock firearms called Tanegashima, and I think this is what Kensei Shin uses. There are a couple of notable sites inside the mountain. The first one is Chasm Cave, where a big rift splits the wall in half. 
Another interesting area is Teppo Torire no Yashiro, done for a shrine. Yashiro meaning a Shinto shrine. Here, long arm centipede giraffe is guarding divine abduction and the only way to white serpent Nushi. It makes me wonder if that Senpo Shinobi we met earlier was sent to infiltrate Gunford to get to the serpent Nushi and obtain the viscera. In the shrine, there is a statue of a bodhisattva holding a snake. In the art book, it is called Yashiro no Hebi Bosatsu, Snake Bodhisattva of the Shrine. If you remember, White Snake's Den also has a shrine that houses the same snake bodhisattva holding the dried viscera, only that one has a part of their face covered in scales. What's up with those, you may ask? Well, in an earlier video, I briefly mentioned the manifestation theory, and it's time we discussed it in a little bit more detail. Manifestation theory, or Honji Suijaku, is a religious theory that states that Buddhist deities choose to appear in Japan as native kami. In other words, according to this theory, some kami, but not all of them, are manifestations of Buddhist deities. Kami were not doubted by early Buddhists, but viewed as inferior to Buddhas, which resulted in a lot of resistance and tension between Buddhism and the Japanese people who wanted to continue worshipping their native kami and have them at the same status levels as Buddhist Buddhas. Thus, Buddhists chose to integrate kami into Buddhism to harmonize the two religions, and the manifestation theory was one of several steps in assimilating Buddhism that resulted in such high levels of Shinto Buddhist syncretism. By the 10th, 11th centuries, there were already numerous pairings linking native kami to Buddhist deities. By the time Kamakura period began, these pairings were fully established in bigger temples and shrines. Up until the end of the Edo period, this theory, which was the last step of assimilation, defined Japanese religious life. Sometimes the theory was even applied to prominent historical figures like Kukai, the founder of Shingon Buddhism, who was claimed to be a manifestation of a kami that, in turn, was a manifestation of a Buddha. Probably the most amazing thing about Honji Suijaku was the fact that this theory was never formalized, systematized, or fixed in any way. That is why the Japanese medieval religious scene is so incredibly confusing. Despite this confusion, the manifestation theory was omnipresent and greatly influenced every aspect of life, not only religion, but culture, society in general, and even economy. There was also a lot of nuance in how some doctrines viewed parity of kami and buddhas, whether kami are just a manifestation of a Buddhist deity, or they are completely equal. For example, Ryobu Shinto, a doctrine derived from Shingon Buddhism, viewed Buddhist deities and kami as one indivisible whole, two sides of the same coin. The theory also saw wide application in religious art. Some showed only Buddhist deities, some only kami, others both of them. Even though the Bodhisattva snake representation is not a painting but a statue, it still depicts both a native kami and a corresponding Buddhist deity. This syncretism that dominated Japanese religious scene up to 1868 was called Shinbutsu Shugo, syncretism of kami and Buddhas. Sengoku period technically was kind of in the middle of it. The syncretism was fully established and Shinbutsu Bunri, the separation, wouldn't come for another 300 years or so. In the Bodhisattva Valley, you can notice sacred trees with Shimanava robes going around them, a purely Shinto thing, right next to the statues of Bodhisattvas. Even Gunford, that houses a shrine where the white serpent is worshipped, is built on the cliff around the Bodhisattva statue. This was a brief note on why we see a Bodhisattva in a Shinto shrine dedicated to a native kami, if you're wondering. I'll leave links in the description box below so you can read more on this topic. And now it's time to move on to giraffe. In the last video, we talked about the clan of centipede miners that mine gold and iron and also search for their star. After they have found the star, they change their name accordingly, and my guess was that the name change is partial. Giraffe always struck me as a character with the weirdest name. Knowing what we know now about the centipedes, take a look at his original name, Nagate no Mukade Giraffe. His name is Giraffe. While the Japanese word for giraffe the animal is written identically Giraffe, doesn't this name strike you as one very, very similar to Shirafuji? I think it may be the reason why Shirafuji's name is written in katakana in the first place, so that you'd be more likely to make the connection. Jirafu is a centipede leader, just like Senun, and he also has a bunch of smaller centipedes serving him. They are scattered all over the caves of the gunfort. He might have been also hired by the Senpo temple but later changed sides, or he might have never been to the Senpo temple and just found his star in Shirafuji. He's there to help her mine iron for the gun for it, and he also guards the path that leads deeper into the valley to the white serpent. 
I once had a theory that Girafu was entrusted with divine abduction, instructed to hide it in the valley, and then he fell for Shirafuji and got stuck in the gun fort, but I'm not so sure. Divine abduction's whereabouts don't really make much sense to me as of yet. Initially, the decision to localize him as Giraffe seemed utterly bizarre to me, but I guess the team lacked context and the idea that the character might actually be named Giraffe seemed more likely to them, especially because all shinobi are nicknamed after animals, so why not a centipede? Well, I have to agree, a ton of context is needed to determine how this name should be treated, because not only do you need to learn about the name-changing process and the Senun's case, but also keep Shirafuji in mind. Given that the English localization of the sixth prayer necklace didn't really explain the star thing all that well, and that they even might have localized giraffe way before they came across Shirafuji, this oversight is indeed unfortunate, but also understandable. You know what the cutest thing is? Girafu is cleaning his talons when not alerted. Senun doesn't do that. This animation was edited for Girafu only to show how he's a part of the Gunforth folk now, and he has taken up some of their habits. So proud of him. A question now. Have you ever noticed how the floor of the shrine is littered with feathers? Nijar feathers. I wonder what little story happened here. We do find a couple of Nijar deeper in the Sunken Valley. Were they trying to infiltrate Gunford from the other side? Were they after the divine abduction for some reason? They do Ishin's bidding, and I can't think of a reason for Ishin to want something from the Gunford, unless he hoped to spirit away the ministry. Interesting detail that I've never noticed before. I completely forgot that the doors do not open by themselves, so let's go get the Gunford Shrine Key. Gunford Shrine Key, for whatever reason, is in Takeru's library that Kuro opens up. I'm not sure I can propose a reason why it is there, but if you can, please do. However, if I still pursue my theory about Owl putting that giant sword into the Guardian Ape so that Tamoya could not get the flower and they wouldn't leave, it would also make sense for him to lock the only way that leads to the ape and just toss the key behind some dusty bookshelf. I don't really know, and I don't feel like there is even an answer to that. Anyway, its original name is pretty straightforward, Gunford Shrine Key. The gate behind the shrine's idol is made to be opened, sounds very mysterious, like there is something special about the gates, but the original line is very simple. This is an item for unlocking the door behind the Buddha statue in the shrine. There is a slight discrepancy between the art book and this description. The art book calls the statue Snake Bodhisattva, while the description calls it a Buddha statue. Sunken Valley people of the Gunford shoot dead all strangers that approach. Among them, the terrifying flint guns of Snake Eyes. The next line is the most important one. Those women are descendants of the ancient Okami people. So it is not at all the Sunken Valley people who are tied to the Okami clan, it's Snake Eyes in particular. The rest of the gunmen are just whoever, they might have no relation to the Okami at all, which would explain why not one of them cares for Sabimaru and its poison. But Shirofuji and Shirahagi are of Okami blood. As for their special eyesight that makes them so deadly, I think it reinforces a very important concept in Sekiro. Those who worship a deity, in time, take on some traits of that deity. Snake Eyes and White Serpent Nushi, Okami up above and Sakura Dragon, Nobles and the Great Carp Nushi. By worshipping a god, they change and become more and more like that god in their appearance, and might even gain some new abilities. Think about Owl and the Owl Nushi from Usui Forest. Owl has a concept art with the bird, and their likeness is very noticeable. I think it makes sense. Okami are a little unique, though, because I'm pretty sure they used to worship the White Serpent while they lived in the Sunken Valley, and then they ascended to worship the dragon, so they kind of got perks from either side. This is why Shizu snipes you with her lightning from 10 miles away. Just imagine if Okami ascended later in the timeline and took guns with them. The Fountainhead Gun Palace. Let's check the fifth prayer necklace for more information on the gun for it. Gononenju, fifth prayer necklace. The original has some very curious details that in my opinion are not emphasized enough in the English localization. It's not men who control the gun for it of the Sunken Valley but the women wielding flint cannons who are called snake eyes. It is said that they have special eyes that allow them to pierce targets over a great distance. So Gunford is run by women, and these women are snake eyes, Shirofuji and Shirahagi, who are the rest of the Sunken Valley people. I hanged out with them for a while as they were cleaning their guns and judging by their appearance and by their little voiced grunts, I'm pretty sure that they are all men, both regular gunmen and heavy gunmen. 
As I've already mentioned, they do not care about Sabimaru one bit, it breaks their posture but does not poison them. Shirafuji is very susceptible to Sabimaru, and you know who else? An elderly lady with the Shakujo scepter and the candle inside the gun for it. Sabimaru absolutely destroys her, she is the only character that I know of who gets the poison status after one Sabimaru strike, and I was using plain Sabimaru with no upgrades. Only one strike and she immediately gets poisoned and drops dead. She also carries antidote powder. Maybe when she was younger she was a snake eye herself, maybe there are more Okami descendants living in the Sunken Valley, but the poison vulnerability applies only to women, which is the point that I've been making for a very long time. As we open the shrine gates, the bridge in front of us is called Tsuribashi, suspension bridge. I wonder if we can cross it safely. Down into the river we go. Ribbon Cave is not as exciting in Japanese, it's Ochidani Okuroka, Sunken Valley Inner Passage or Back Passage. Ribbon Cave is completely absent from the art book, unfortunately, so there is no more insight I can offer. It's just some monkey bones at the entrance, mossed over bodhisattva carvings, and a couple of grappling points. Bosatsudani, literally Bodhisattva Valley. The art book does not mention what specific bodhisattvas are placed here, if these are specific at all. It just says that there are Bosatsu Zazo, seated bodhisattva figures, and Bosatsu Ritsuzo, standing bodhisattva figures. Just next to the idol there is the crazy rice lady again, she is here to point you to the dried serpent viscera. Funnily enough, you can pray near her again using Mibu balloons or sugars, and it would prompt the same dialogue as she had on the bridge to the castle, but if you had already prayed with her there, she'll give you no rewards this time. Technically, the white serpent's den is also a part of the Sunken Valley, but wouldn't you know, we have already discussed it in a corresponding video. The most interesting part of its den is the snake bodhisattva and the rock divers, the guys who appear from the walls trying to skewer you. I think this shrine is a twin shrine to the one where divine abduction is, built by the same people around the same time. If you ever notice, just above the Guardian Apes Arena there is an absolutely gigantic bodhisattva statue, and this one is mentioned separately in the art book, Dibo Bosatsuzo, Affectionate Mother Bodhisattva Statue. It is a female bodhisattva cradling an infant. While the art book does not say what specific bodhisattva that is, I think it's safe to assume it is supposed to be a reference to Kanon, a Buddhist deity of compassion and mercy, a patron of mothers. She has many manifestations in Japanese Buddhism, and one of them is called Jibo Kanon, depicted in exactly the same way, a woman holding an infant. Jibo Kanon being here seems to be a very deliberate choice. I was not able to verify it in more than one source, unfortunately, but Kanon seems to be associated, at least in some capacity, with Musubi no Kami, according to the manifestation theory, literally a god of knots, of connection, god of matchmaking and marriage. Let's not forget that the lion ape's story revolves around him yearning for his deceased partner, and it's ultimately about family. This place is his garden where he tends to the white lotus in hopes to give it to his bride one day. I think it makes a lot of sense for Dibo Kanon, a patron of mother's love and familial connection, to be here. Guardian Ape's watering hole is called Shishizaru no Suiba. The word Suiba means a watering place. This is also the place where the fountainhead waters pool deeply, so we can see broken off pieces of the shrines and pavilions of the fountainhead palace that were washed downstream. Fun fact, you can actually see the white serpent from here. The art book also gives a depiction of Kagawa Shisuren, fragrant lotus, that we already discussed in an earlier video. Sunken Valley is the place where our ascension to the Fountainhead Palace starts, and it always felt otherworldly to me, much more so than even the Sempo Temple. From this point on, we'll be having much more questions and much fewer answers. However, we'll try our best to gather as much context as possible to see if we can shed at least some light onto the last areas of the game and the events that took place there. Don't forget to check the description for relevant links and more reading. Thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.